All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into the Pixar announcements now. So this is the second uh, chunk of announcements, and there, there, there's a little bit more to talk about here um, as we move along. So yeah, let's get started with the, actually with the Disney Plus announcements that uh, were announced, because it looks like Pixar is really going to jump in here. And, uh, you know, they, they had a, uh, a series on Disney Plus called Monsters at Work, based on the Monsters, Inc. universe, which I, I think I watched the first season and maybe a little bit of the second season, and I thought it was cute. I really, you know, it uh, wasn't a series I looked forward to every week, but, you know, if I was on Disney+, Plus and I had finished an episode of, I don't know, uh, Mandalorian or Loki or whatever, and I saw that it was there, it's like a 20-minute episode, I thought, yeah, I'll just pop it on. Um, so really cute, but it looks like they're going to have two more sort of main, uh, not mainstream, but mainline Disney Plus projects in the pipeline now. So the first one is one that we knew about called Dream Productions, which um, we had heard about a couple weeks ago after, or maybe a month ago or so, after Inside Out 2, that they had been quietly developing this entire series set between Inside Out 1 and Inside Out 2 um, that takes place in that Dream Factory, which I believe was in the first film um, where they're producing all the dreams in Riley's head. And, you know, I think that this is a really inventive idea, um, and I, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. I don't know anything about the story itself, but I think that um, as long as, you know, with these Pixar projects, I think as long as you get the general premise um, and it seems inventive and everything like that, then you just got to trust Pixar. They, you know, they've been on a roll lately. Um, you know, my faith in them uh, with a couple projects they announced here is stretched a little bit, but I'm always reminded that every time I kind of doubt the concept, they usually prove me wrong. Um, almost always, in fact, prove me wrong. And so I have no doubt that uh, it will be the same this time. So yeah, we'll, we'll see um, how it turns out. But obviously, I've mentioned Inside Out 1 is perhaps my favorite film of all time. I just I think it's one of the most profound, uh, you know, uh, deep and yet enjoyable, entertaining films. It has just everything that you want. It makes you laugh, it makes you cry. Um, and it, it tells a, a really interesting and profound story creatively. So yeah, and I loved Inside Out 2. You can go check out my review of it on the channel in a previous episode of Access Blockbusters Pod. But needless to say, um, I'm very much looking forward to this when it comes out. Uh, second series that they talked about is the other series. Actually, this series was announced a long time ago, but it looks like it's coming out on December 6th. So very soon, in fact, I think Dream Productions will come out next year. I believe, but uh, this series will be uh, coming out at the end of the year, December 6th, and that is Win or Lose. Win or Lose uh, was a series that was announced a long time ago, I believe, um, and they're finally ready to release it, and they released a short trailer. It was really short, um, and it didn't show a lot. It showed a lot of baseball, which, um, you know, kind of just a, on a personal note, I love baseball. Baseball is my favorite sport to watch and to, to play. Um, so that got me interested, but really not a whole lot here. But it was it was the premise that they talked about a long time ago that had, you know, had me hooked even more so than this trailer. This trailer looked fine. Um, it was really short. And I think that there were some hints towards the Pixar kind of profound, deep message that they usually have here. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, there's the potential here with with the idea of what does it mean to be a winner um, when it's at someone else's expense? Because I know, I believe this is the show that they said um, will be, you know, talking about the same game or the same event in many different perspectives. And so I, I'm really curious to see how they're going to tackle this idea of, you know, what does it mean to win and what does it mean to lose and uh, what happens when, you know, one person is, is, is happier that they won and the others, I, I'm just, I'm just spitting out random ideas here, but I think the potential here, especially based on the trailer, which, you know, didn't really move the needle for me, uh, but was, was quite entertaining. Um, I think the potential is, is all there to, to really have a good solid uh, and maybe even something more than solid um, uh, series going forward. So uh, yeah, those are the two Disney plus shows that should be coming out sometime over the next year or so, which is very exciting. Now let's talk about the four film announcements announcements, which I was, I was surprised. Let's talk about the film announcement we didn't get first, which we did not get a confirmation of Inside Out 3, which has to be inevitable. I mean, Inside Out 2 made a billion and a half dollars. And unlike some other franchises um, in the Disney canon, you know, I, uh, I, I think Inside Out 2 kind of proved to me, because, um, you know, I going into Inside Out 2, I mentioned this, I was like, how in the world are they going to follow up on the first Inside Out? And is it even worth it? Does it feel like a cash grab? Turns out, no. 
Um, I mean, you know, sure, it was motivated by financial success and all that kind of stuff. Um, but no, I, I think that there was a lot to explore in Riley's head as she grows up. And I think that there are even a couple more chapters that you can do in her head. You can do uh, going to college, you can do adulthood, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so I think that the Inside Out franchise is very rich as long as they continue to mine it in a way that's creative um, and not just, you know, like, let's do, uh, you know, like, let's make a movie about every single month in, in her high school life. Like, that's that's mm-hmm kind of lame but anyways um you know uh they there was an interview with bob Iger, uh i think a couple days ago where the reporter asked um you know are you are you interested in making inside out three based on the commercial and critical success of inside out two to which he responded i'll just say and i think he he was smiling when he said this i'll just say i'd also love an inside out three so everyone was kind of thinking oh inside out three obviously they're going to announce it at d23 they did not uh you know, at this point, if I had to bet, and I'm not a betting person, but if I had to bet, uh, if they were going to make Inside Out 3, I would be very, very confident. I would, I think it's pretty much an inevitability, inevitability, because, I mean, the film is one of the most critically successful Pixar films ever, if not the most, I think, maybe Toy Story 3. No, I think it is. I think it's number one. I could be wrong. Um, it's certainly one of Disney's most you know, profitable and, and successful films ever. And it's a franchise that resonates with everybody. You know, it's it's truly a four-quadrant franchise. And so I would be really surprised if they um, did not announce Inside Out 3, probably next year, maybe at next year's D23, uh, to release in 2026, something like that. Um, because I, I know that they announced Inside Out 2 at the 2023 Disney uh, D23, and then they released it in 2024. So probably too quick of a turnaround. So, um, yeah. There is that. Perhaps they're just working on the story. So that is the announcement we did not get. But we did get uh, updates on four projects that Pixar will be releasing over the next few years. So let's talk about the first one, which is Elio, which is the first, um, the film that, the, the next Pixar film that we'll be releasing sometime next year. Uh, not much that I know about this project personally. It seems like it'll be taking something like a space adventure or something like that. Um, the only real big announcement here that I wanted to, to bring up is that Elio, uh, the, um, Zoe Saldana, I should say, will be joining the cast of Elio. And that's always exciting. You know, Disney, it seems a very tight-knit family. Obviously, if you're kind of in the Disney family, you know, you have Chris Evans voicing Lightyear, um, Buzz Lightyear, and, you know, you have now Zoe Saldana from the Avatar franchise, and obviously the Marvel franchise joining the Pixar franchise. So it seems like, you know, they, uh, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, obviously, with Onward. So it seems like, you know, once you're kind of in the Disney family, um, it seems like they, you know, they're all really excited to join these Pixar projects as well, which is really exciting. I think Zoe Saldana is obviously a dynamic actress, and can't wait to see her in that. Um, we did get our only announcement next up of our only uh new newly announced original pixar film so we have elio which is um an original film and then we have a film called hoppers i believe H- hopper or hopper i think hoppers um and I'm, I'm not gonna lie the concept of this film really took me aback and I-, I would be lying to you if i if i told you that this concept made me excited for this film uh this doesn't sound anything remotely interesting or um, up my alley, um, the way that they described it. That being said, I mean, I'm not in the business anymore of doubting Pixar, especially on the upswing that they've been on recently. So, um, we'll have to see. Um, I also, just on a side note, really am liking the fact that they're doing kind of one sequel project and one original project kind of alternating. I think that that is, that's a formula that should work for them pretty well because they have established IP and also the more original projects they do, um, the, you know, the more, uh, well, on the, well, there are a couple, couple things here. Um, the more they, they continue on with their established franchises, as long as they're making good quality films, like they did with Toy Story 4 and, and Set Out 2, um, the more money they'll make to then invest in these original projects, which can then turn into franchises. So it all, it all works in Disney synergy and Pixar synergy really well. So I, I do really like the strategy of having kind of an alternating original film and then a sequel, and you can kind of branch out more franchises from there. But anyways, this is the, the other original film called Hoppers, which, uh, is I think following a young girl, I, I think, um, who whose mind can, you know, go into the mind of beavers. Um, and then there's some kind of plot there with the mayor who's voiced by John Hamm, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, look, it's not something that appeals to me at all, just based on the concept. But again, I mean, you know, we'll talk about a, a franchise that I thought was dead, a, not dead, but finished a long time ago. They revived it. I thought it was stupid, and then here we are, and uh, I, I loved the, the film that they released. So, um, 
you know, who knows? But this is this is a project that certainly raised more eyebrows than uh, got me excited. But it will release in 2026, and I guess we'll have to see about that. So, um, yeah. Um, next up is that aforementioned project and franchise, Toy Story 5. We got some announcements. Um, and, you know, it's been a while since I've talked about the Toy Story franchise on the channel. But um, if you guys remember, uh, I, I thought Toy Story 4 was a stupid idea. I thought... Why in the world would we revive this franchise after the perfect ending that was given in Toy Story 3? Um, not only that, but I thought the trailers were atrocious. I thought that they were so cringy with, with Sporky and everything like that. Um, but like I always tell you guys, I go into these projects with an open mind, and I want to give these projects the benefit of the doubt. And I went into Toy Story 4 just thinking I thought everything leading up to this was dumb, and, and just I thought it was really crazy. All the reviews were really good, and I just said, okay, here we go. And I ended up really, really liking, if not loving, the film Toy Story 4. That being said, um, if you had asked me at the time, would you make Toy Story 5? I would have said no. Um, but here we are, Toy Story 5. And again, I'm skeptical. Once again, I, I, I can't help it. I find myself being skeptical because I'm like, when are we ever going to let this franchise rest? Until it runs out of money or what? what? Because the concept for this film, on the one hand, is kind of interesting. On the other hand, it seems a little weird to me um and so the baseline of the concept is it's going to deal with the toys dealing with electronics which i think is actually kind of interesting I, you know what if bonnie has a phone now um and what is are the phones sentient you know what does that mean ai whatever um so i think that has a lot of potential really interesting um but then they talked about the villains of the film which are 50 buzz light years that are malfunctioning because they're stuck on play mode or something like that and i I, I don't know. I mean, if you told me before Toy Story 4, because I didn't know who the real villain was, that Gabby Gabby was, you know, this doll was the villain, I would have been like, that's kind of dumb, but okay. Um, then again, I mean, the Toy Story villains, you know, like Lotso and Prospector and whatever. Um, and I mean, Sid was scary. Sid, Sid was really scary. Um, but yeah, I would have, I would have been like, I just don't know about that. Um, turned out that she was a great villain really dynamic villain in that film um but 50 buzz light years being the villain i count me as somebody who's skeptical obviously um this film releases in summer 2026 obviously i will be there day one probably to see the film but i just don't know um i like what at some point it feels like the other shoe has to drop and the franchise is going to run out of steam and i don't want that to happen i really want this franchise to be as pristine as it can be because all four films in my opinion are amazing and so i just i don't know like keep pushing your luck i guess but also i really hope that we can just keep this you know keep the franchise um at a place where it's revered as, as it is now um so there is that the final announcement though and there was a little bit of a, a breaking news video that i posted on the youtube channel regarding it but we can talk about it more in depth here is incredibles 3 incredibles 3 is officially announced um and it's coming out from Pixar. And I just, I can't wait for this because I've been saying ever since, like out of all the franchises that Pixar has, Incredibles is one that should, in my opinion, because, you know, I'm not a big fan of just continuing to make sequels for the sake of sequels, but Incredibles is one that absolutely should have a franchise. I mean, it's an action franchise, but it has heart, it has uh, laughs, it, it, it kind of plays on uh, really interesting riffs of the superhero genre, while also delivering really interesting messages. Uh, Screen Slaver, I believe, was the villain of the second film. I thought that was really interesting. Obviously, Syndrome from the first film, really inventive. And so... Um, to hear that Brad Bird is coming back, who Brad Bird was the, the creator and the director of the first two films, um, is coming back, I believe, as the director, although I don't think I heard that explicitly, but I believe he's coming back as the director. It's just so exciting. I mean, again, like I said, this is, of all of the franchises that should be getting sequels, it's The Incredibles, in my opinion, because even if you don't make the, the you know, the kind of Pixar film like Up where you cry and sob in the first because I, I don't you know I don't think that the Incredibles films are the most profound but I think it's a fun way to deal with a different quadrant and genre of films while also giving it that Pixar spin and uh, I, I can't wait personally I think that that's really really exciting so to recap with the films as we wrap up this Pixar section here the timeline looks to be um, next up is Elio in 2025 which I believe will be the only Pixar film in 2025 then in summer 2026 it looks like we'll get Toy story five and then after that it looks like and i'm not nothing's confirmed hopper hoppers could come up before toy story five but it seemed to me like toy story five was for in, uh, further along in development so just you know we have ellie in 2025 i believe we have toy story five in 2026 uh, in, in the summer and then i i would assume we have hoppers 
um, sometime in mid to late 2026. And then I think we'll have Incredibles 3 sometime in mid 2027. That's that's the Pixar slate coming up. I, I'm excited about it, you know? Um, again, the balance of original content and uh, franchises that we're all really excited about. So let me know in the comments down below uh, what you're most excited about. I'm assuming it's going to be Incredibles 3 for, for almost every single one of you, but let me know if, if some of the other franchises are, are interesting and appealing to you as well. I'd love to hear in the comments down below.